हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू दिस स्पेशल पॉडकास्ट माय नेम इज दीपक चौहान एंड आई एम थ्रिल टू हैव यू विद अस टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स दैट वी आर हियरिंग इन टेक्नोलॉजी वर्ल्ड दैट इज जनरेटिव एआई सो व्हाट इज जनरेटिव एआई हाउ इट इज गोइंग टू इंपैक्ट द एवरीडे यूजर हाउ इट इज गोइंग टू इंपैक्ट द लाइफ दैट वी लिव एंड हाउ इट इज गोइंग टू इंपैक्ट द वे वी वर्क सो दीज आर सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चंस दैट कम टू आवर माइंड so to navigate uh, these questions i am excited to have two of the brightest mind in the industry today with us so please welcome anirban and shiva krishnamurthy hello everyone anirban here so i am the ceo of precious decision solutions which is a boutique data analytics company we help our customers get real value out of their data by using various ai ml models and solutions to generate insights recommendations and prescriptions shiva over to you hey everyone and uh, deepak thanks for having us here i am shiva i am a co-founder and chief technology officer of uh, prescience and personally i have been working in the technology data and ai field for the last 25 years or so let's uh, start with question number 1 uh, which is to shiva shiva what is gen ai and how does it differ from other types of artificial intelligence that are involved yeah so gen ai is actually a new class of ai which has come into the picture since 2023 uh, for us who have been working in the data and ai field for long we see this as a continuum of advancements in technology and in a new kind of methods that have come into being for the last almost 50 years or so and uh, generative ai as such is essentially ai if you look at it right is all about pattern recognition okay we try to mathematically model real world behavior of users and systems mathematically and recognize those patterns to predict and recommend what is going to happen in the future with respect to generative ai it really is able to use the broad context of systems data that you put together and also predict what is going to happen in a natural language form so we are actually generating new content generating this content can be text images or videos or even code right using all of the information all of the data that has been that the models have been trained on okay all right thank you so much Anirban can you give me some examples of practical applications of gen ai in everyday life because we are hearing a lot about gen ai everybody right. talking about that so i think that will be very useful if you can give some practical examples sure deepak if you look at gen ai there are at a very broad level two types of use cases one is creation of new content other is creating derivatives of existing content so when it comes to new content there are applications like you can create say newsletters social media posts images videos which can be for anyone like marketing and sales department using it or people creating their own videos and images or people creating training videos and other things right so those are things then you can have educational content creation and various other fields okay and on the other side if you have the existing content from there you can use chatbots and you know virtual assistants to help customers or your own employees in the company get access to data and information very quickly fantastic you can create search engines out of it or you can even use them to automate certain processes which is currently being done manually so these are at a very broad level some of very good in fact i have been using uh, chat gpt a lot uh, to generate some of the content that i use right in my everyday work all right so shiva one more question that comes to mind is we talked about content generation so how does generative ai learn and generate content can you give us a basic overview of the process for our viewers yeah if you look at it see some of the older technologies actually it started out with some of the technologies which were invented about 20 years back there is something called word to wake so word to wake really created a vectorized database of the content that ingests so that you have words associations okay. so what is the distance between the word what is the okay. relationship between <clears throat> multiple words etc right and uh, we had uh, another uh, breakthrough uh, coming out in 2017 um, called uh, transformer transformer yes. architecture is the foundation of uh, some of the modern uh, generative ai uh, models 
and uh, what it does is it helps preserve content across mm-hmm. a large volume of content and context across a large volume of conversations and there are various concepts like encoders and decoders which are used to train these models and how it uh, ultimately using large volumes of data mm-hmm. which is the foundational models use large language models use they are able to form associations between various different words okay and predict the next word so, so whenever you are really? typing when you are typing a sentence you want to understand what is the let's say you want to understand what is the meaning of generative ai now the model at the inference time when it is when you are asking the question when it is actually answering that question it is able to predict oh basis great. the various the next uh, word this is the various training data oh, that has been content that has been ingested uh, it is able to predict the next word and that's the fundamental basically how it works oh fantastic fundamental level i mean that's great great insight so shiva are there ethical considerations also in the use of generative ai Yes absolutely there are uh, uh, several ethical considerations uh, that are arising as in as more and more we use some of these models and for example uh, we talk about uh, uh, when the models are getting trained right they are trained on huge volumes of data mm-hmm. and now a lot of this data could be copyrighted for example there was a, a lawsuit going on between open ai and new york times uh, not so long ago around uh, new york times data that is getting ingested in yeah, open yeah. ai right so that's one uh, aspect of it and uh, the second aspect of it is uh, the data which is uh, which it is being trained on could be biased for yeah. example you may have certain sort of uh, racial bias or language bias yes yeah. right so how do we eliminate bias especially in closed source models you are not very sure whether the data is uh, that has been used to train the models are biased or not right and uh, so that's the one fundamental aspect which come into the picture when the models are getting trained yeah. and then the second aspect is how the models are used right are you using these models to generate for example a scientific paper right and and the other thing is uh, by virtue or by design these models are designed to hallucinate yes, because yes. Uh, you really report. don't yeah. know whether the model is spitting out an eloquent confident output with false data yeah. so how are you able to catch that right so that's one of the aspects that as we go along we'll have to address this and then the aspect of how do you use copyrighted content comes in even when your somebody is actually writing content using these models yeah. so there are several issues which need to be sorted out all right many of the content writers are using this to enhance their content they are basically generating content by themselves and putting it on chat gpt what exactly is happening is that content that for example i have written does it go into the database of chat gpt or is it like they just uh, use it without getting it posted to the databases how is it happening there are there are multiple different aspects uh, the con- chat gpt or the large language models or the foundation models any of the foundation models already have content which uh, they have ingested okay. using effective prompt engineering techniques you can avoid the content that you are writing okay. to get into that model okay. right but at the same time they will be using some outdated content also yes there are newer techniques which have been emerging the ones people started to play around developers okay. started okay. to utilize this so there is a technique called rag which a uh, lot of us use to make sure that uh, the content that uh, the chat gpt or any other model like llama is spitting out is anchored on the content that you have given okay right? i got that uh, yeah and then you can also use model fine tuning you can fine tune models as well so there are various techniques that we got that it. are evolving and we continue to use all right so prompt engineering is a new term which is finding a lot of traction right okay so continuing with that so what are some basic terms and concepts that someone new to the gen ai should understand one is prompt engineering so what exactly is prompt engineering see prompt engineering is uh, essentially to do with how you are uh, uh, utilizing the prompts to generate the output that you want for example the uh, how you are asking the question to the model right? okay so that's the prompt engineering part and then there is a retrieval augmented generation that we use to anchor some of the content that the chat gpt or the large language model is outputting to the content that you want for example you have uh, let's say published an annual report 
for the current financial year and now the data that is the foundation model is trained on is for last year but you want to you want your answers to be specific to this year you are using a rack technique to anchor the answers to the current financial year's performance and the other terms around chat gpt are the foundation models itself foundation model is a term that was coined by stanford institute for human centric ai which essentially represents models which have been trained on large volumes of data and they can also perform not just one specific task but then they are adept at multiple different tasks for example you can use them for classifying text you can use them for code generation oh, you can use them for generative generating content those are called foundational models okay very good Okay, the next question is to Anirban. Anirban, how can generative AI be integrated into existing business process to improve efficiency and innovation? This is a very pertinent question, yeah. which lots and lots of leaders are asking. Yeah, this is the question. So everyone in all industries, all companies, yes. they are looking at the boards are looking at, and then consultancy companies have come into yeah, yeah, yeah. pitch in various values. So there are four or five areas where you can quickly look at how you can do it. One of the most important one is how do you automate and optimize various business processes in mm-hmm. your thing so if you have a lot of stuff where repetitive work being done manually so data entry or some other data processing can we use gen ai t- techniques to make them automate it and so reduce the human burden and also uh-huh. reduce the errors consequently or if you have some workflows that can be optimized and automated fully right if they had some automated parts some manual so can we look at redesigning that workflow and then make it more accurate and also faster and efficient the second part is on in terms of how do you engage with your customers yeah right? that's very important so people have been trying now with different types of uh, digital assistants and chatbots yes. and all to get the answers quickly because otherwise you have ring the customers have this number and you are put on hold for one hour yeah, two yeah, hours yeah. people have horror stories it's a huge pain <laughs> there you can have them so at least the basic level information and actually mo- most of the people who call they need those basic level information and then they will just go away so then you can focus on the people who really have some issues and okay. resolve them third part will come in terms of hr right mm-hmm. one is very interesting one is in terms of how do you handle so many cvs and other things coming mm-hmm. automatic because manually processing and going through every cv and then figuring out if this is relevant not even for which opening so it's very difficult so can we automate that whole okay. see for a, i mean small company like us we get hundreds of cvs every day yes. just think of the large company whether it's uh, icic bank or indian oil or infosys right so they will be getting in like tens of thousands yes. or maybe lakhs how do you process all of that and then do the shortlisting second is also in terms of training your employees right can you create structured specific training for different folks Very instead of having some only 10 courses and force people to fit into that that is other part the last part is also in the finance and legal there again there a lot of standard regular processes which you can automate there mm-hmm. then other thing is also in terms of creating summaries Yes. summaries of legal documents yeah. summaries of say some proposals that have come so procurement and all of us look at that and then also creation of draft legal documents draft proposals so all of that can be automated to a large extent using gen ai all right shiva uh, can you share some case studies or success stories with respect to gen ai which have come to your mind or you have come across which has made huge business impact one one of the aspects i think generative ai has been very effective is unstructured data working with unstructured data mm-hmm. right and a couple of instances i will talk about where generative ai along with predictive ai has been used to create a, the maximum impact on the business right and that's where we see the value coming in of generative ai tools because they are able to process a lot of uh, unstructured information very quickly and also with a zero shot sort of learning or a few shot learning which means that you are compressing the time to train the model compressing yeah. the time to utilize uh, some of this unstructured data 
very effectively to a uh, very short time frame right uh, okay. so uh, one project that we did was to uh, create a sales co-pilot okay. which is which is very effective for business development teams in a b2b scenario to understand what kind of proposals what kind of customer questions uh, are being asked when they are submitting the bid documents right mm -hmm. on the predictive side we already had a, a uh, win loss prediction model uh, uh, for uh, this customer where they were looking at okay uh, this is the probability of uh, winning this bid maybe to 70 percent 50 percent whatever and this prediction model got augmented by inputs that are coming from the generative ai system that we built which in just past proposals past bid documents and the questions that the customers asked during that stage uh, so that the sales teams were able to more effectively engage with the customer or modify the bid document, right? And this, in fact, resulted in almost a 7% uh, increase in the win percentage of the bids that they are submitting because of these insights. The other case study is around in the financial services space, creating narratives around financial analysis. Oh, very good. Now we all know that Gen AI tools are very effective in generating content. But then how do they generate content which tell a story to the business for a financial performance of a company? Now we are ingesting large amounts of data around the financial performance of the company, the balance sheet, the profit and loss statements. And then we are able to create a narrative which is obviously may not be like 100% ready for consumption, but then it is almost 70-80% ready which the research analyst can further modify and tweak. So that's where I feel generative AI tools are being more most effective now, creating the first draft of narratives, understanding, helping understand large volumes of data, and then helping the human expert build the cohesive narrative around this. Anirban, my question to you is, how do you foresee generative AI transforming industries over the next, let's say, five years, 10 years? Sure. Yeah, this is an interesting topic. This has been going on and there's also been a little bit of fear mongering, right? So people, yeah, like exactly. for example, in the movie industry and others, they have been going on strikes against Gen AI and others. Of course, there will be certain industries which are more in terms of new content creation, which will get probably more affected initially. And that includes movie industries or, you know, uh, creating any kind of content, right? Writing new books and all those things uh, where uh, it will be easier to do it and you can also quickly do multiple different stuff right and then decide which parts to take which okay. to discard right so today filming and all those things is difficult now you do one scene then you say or should i do it a little different and also then it takes time it costs money but with jenny i probably you can do it faster so that is there the other part will also come in terms of industries which again create derivatives. So for example, dubbing industry. Mm -hmm. So that you don't need external people. You can directly use uh, Gen AI with certain. You can have Amitabh Bachchan speaking in all possible <laughs> languages in the same voice, right? And people would be seeing <coughs> of this talking. Similarly, the whole interpretation and translation industry. There are huge industries translate documents from yes. Say Japanese to English yep. or German to English, so that industry will also get affected immensely. All right, great. So a similar question to this is: What advice you give to executives, senior executives who are trying to incorporate Gen AI into their business? Yeah, so this is an important uh, question, right? Yeah. So and, uh, as I said earlier, so there is a lot of pressure on executives to show that they are doing certain things in the Gen AI space. They had started some initiatives and all from the boards, from shareholders, from everyone. Uh, but here, the thing is, I would say, stop, wait. There is this expert, Casey Kozirkov, and she says, we have to look at the AI elephant in the room. So do you really need AI to solve this Exactly. Problem? That is the first thing you should look at, what you're trying to do, why you're doing that, and then why AI. Yeah. That could be regular other technologies and processes which can help you get this done. Even without using AI, you have to be very clear that AI indeed is going to give you significant benefits and advantages over uh, non-AI uh, tools and technologies. All right. Okay, Shiva. So there is one more question that comes to my mind: Is how do you? What are some of the emerging trends in generative AI that you are excited about? Yeah, there are. This field, I would say, Deepak is evolving very rapidly. Yeah. 
and it is also early days so there are several things that are coming up which will have an impact in the long term one of the things uh, that i'm seeing is as i talked about in the last uh, uh, a uh, question also is the ability to merge uh, structured and unstructured data how can we actually produce integrate uh, narratives around uh, predictive ai and generative ai so that's one area that i am very excited about uh, the second thing which is emerging is the multimodal uh, ai so mm-hmm. it's not just about uh, uh, languages and text it is also about videos images uh, for example uh, you might have seen a uh, uh, a demonstration of uh, an ai tutor by uh, khan academy yes. recently yes. which integrates uh, uh, the ability to understand images uh, like uh, uh, geometry and all that along with uh, the ability uh, tutor a student uh, so uh, those are aspects that will come in as we uh, go along and uh, the third aspect which i am also very excited about which is more technological is the open source movement around ai mm-hmm. so the early days of gen ai were dominated by ai and chat gpt but then uh, a lot of very good quality high performance models have come on the open source side as well with companies like mistral and meta coming up with llama so what open source will do is in you know, able to create Uh, innovations along the sides uh, for a lot of developers uh, that are working on the generative ai tools so that's again a moment that uh, i'm very excited about all right great thank you so much all right thank you so much shivan anirban how do you see the role of human creativity evolving with the rise of generative ai yes with the rise of gen ai now you would have some of the people can look at much of uh this affairs to uh, design in terms of development in terms of thinking of new ways to create stuff, new stuff to create so all of this can be done in a easier and more seamless way by human beings for example if you are looking at software engineers so now instead of focusing more on actually whether this code is correct or compiling interpreting all of these part they can focus more on the design part of it they should be more focused on whether i've got the right set of rhythms data structures and all and creating it then the code snippets can be created through gen ai part of it mm-hmm. but you cannot blindly use gen ai to create the whole software because then you would not know whether it will work right or not yes exactly so you have to think at a more system level or at a strategic level to ensure that your output is correct similarly if you're creating a marketing material for your whether it's a fmcg brand or a tv or whatever it is you can always give some instructions to the well and when it will create some material but you have to know what is the brand all about the material that you create for samsung will not be same for what you create for sony right yeah. that difference is that things have to be there from they will have to then think that way mm-hmm. and get the output from gen ai so human creativity is going to stay right yeah it it will definitely for sure absolutely yeah, definitely <laughs> all right great all right a similar question i think question which is coming up is how do you anticipate specific sectors to do generative advancements what do you, in fact you see so some of them i already mentioned in yeah. terms of the movies and the translation and yeah. the interpretation industries are there and then in many of the sectors the new product creation will be affected a lot by uh, gen ai mm-hmm. so for example now you can create rapidly lots of different prototypes with different features and then look at and say okay which one do you want to go so this could be your simple cell phone design or car design or even in drugs delivery drugs uh, discovery and uh, delivery mechanisms so everywhere you see a lot of that so that will also have a huge impact on all these different sectors so similarly on legal and financial side so stuff which you should take a lot of stuff and so that's why you always need to get outsourced help right you need to have consultants and all because you need to create reports and something for rbi or for some other regulator or government so now these also can be done very quickly using the llms okay. if you are aware of what should go in there so i think some of those industries which work on this part they will also get affected due to llms all right so i think we had a great discussion on gen ai and this is the fourth podcast right on the series of podcasts that we have planned to do 
Yes, I personally believe that Gen AI is a new technology, it's exciting and people should not be afraid of it, rather we should adopt it, right? Absolutely. Exactly. Guys, thank you so much for your time. To all our viewers, if you have any questions with respect to Gen AI or you have any doubts, please reach out to me or to Shiva and Anirban and we'll be very happy to answer them for you. So thank you so much for your time and I hope you like this podcast. Thank you so much and bye-bye.